Above me is the Wise Smart light bulb. It's not Apple HomeKit compatible, or is it? Hey Siri, turn off overhead light. Okay, the overhead light is off. Above me here is the Elgato key light. It doesn't have any smart home integration, or does it? Hey Siri, turn off key light. Okay. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make non HomeKit compatible smart devices HomeKit compatible. Let's get into it. Home automation and smart devices are great. The main problem is there are so many devices out there that use different standards and are compatible with different platforms. Typically, they're compatible with Amazon and Google's platforms, but what about a lot of us with these guys, iPhones and iOS devices? My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech, everyday tech for everyday people. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can bring in smart devices into HomeKit even if they're not HomeKit compatible out of the box. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna do this by using one of these. These are, This is a Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi 4. I also have a Raspberry Pi 3 here. And actually what's running on my network now is this Raspberry Pi 0W. The way we're gonna do this is by installing a software called HomeBridge. HomeBridge is an open source software that bridges the gap between a smart device and HomeKit. Now first, you may or may not have heard of a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi is a tiny and affordable computer that you can use to learn programming and do other fun projects like this Homebridge project. Now setting up a Raspberry Pi used to be very difficult. It required some technical skill. And even if you're following a tutorial, uh, you know, step by step, it could be very intimidating because it required you to just put some commands into a command line. But now they've made it really easy with some tools out there to set this up as a piece of cake. Now, before we start, let me just say you can run Homebridge on a Mac or Windows PC or even on Linux itself, but you need to have a computer that's always on. And besides, these computers are super cheap if you can find them. So let me give you a rundown of what you need to get this done. You First, you need a Raspberry Pi with a network connection. Now, I'm running things off my Raspberry Pi 0W here. This has a Wi-Fi antenna in it. Now, the y, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 not only have a Wi-Fi antenna, but they all have an Ethernet jack in it. Now, if possible, use the Ethernet jack. This will give you a more stable and responsive connection to Homebridge. Then you're going to need an SD card, a micro SD card. Any size will do because Homebridge doesn't really take that much storage here. Then you're going to need a computer with an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, because we're going to need uh, the computer to install Homebridge onto the micro SD card that will run off the Raspberry Pi. And then lastly, you're gonna need a Homebridge compatible smart device. Now, fortunately, most of the popular smart device brands are already compatible with Homebridge, such as Nest, Ring, Hue, and TP-Link Casa. Now, I've done a video on how to control Google Assistant with Siri shortcuts. You can check out that video here or in the description below. But this video is different. I am actually bringing smart devices directly into HomeKit. Now you can still use Siri shortcuts with this solution, and I'll get into a little demo towards the end of this video. Now the first thing you wanna do, of course, is in insert your micro SD card. I have my micro SD card here in the card reader, and you're gonna to wanna to download an app called Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm, I'm running version 1.6.2. This is gonna the tool that we're gonna to use to install the OS in your operating system. So first we're gonna choose OS. And typically when you're installing a Raspberry Pi, you're gonna be using one of these two options as a general purpose Raspberry Pi operating system. But we're gonna be going all the way down here to other specific purpose OS. And we're gonna go and choose Homebridge. And we're gonna use the Homebridge Raspberry Pi image. And then we're gonna choose the storage here this will show you all the external storages you have. Now make sure you choose the right one if you have more than one because this will erase the contents of that storage here. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on Write. I'm gonna put in your password here, hit OK. And now this is gonna start writing the OS onto the micro SD card. So I'm gonna jump ahead in time after this is done and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, we have everything installed and it's 
it's ejected the micro SD card. So now the next step is now we're going to put this micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi. Now, if your Raspberry Pi is already connected to your network via the Ethernet jack, you can go ahead and skip to the next step. But if you want to connect your Raspberry Pi to your Wi-Fi home network, then you go, you're going to after you boot up your Raspberry Pi fully, it should create a Wi-Fi network called Homebridge Wi-Fi Setup. You're going to want to connect to that network, and then there you can point the Raspberry Pi to your home Wi-Fi network. So we're going to connect to that home, Homebridge Wi-Fi Setup network. Once we do that, a captive portal should pop up here, and this is where we can set up the Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi wi -Fi to point to our home network here. Now, once we set up our Wi-Fi here, then the Raspberry Pi will reboot, and then, we, and then we can go on to the next step. Now, one thing to note is, if this captive portal doesn't pop up or you accidentally close it, there's another way to get to it. You can open up your default browser, and type in the address homebridge.local. Once you type in that address, that should take you to the Homebridge Wi-Fi setup page again, and then we can go on to the next step. After our Raspberry Pi is fully booted up and on our network, either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, we're gonna want to log in to our Raspberry Pi. Now you're gonna to need to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, and then you use a browser from another device to log into there. You can use your phone, tablet, and in my case here, I'm just using my MacBook Air, and I'm using Chrome here to log in to my Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're on an Apple device, you don't need to search for the IP address. You could just type in in the address bar, homebridge.local, and that'll take you to the login page. The default username and password is admin, admin. Now, once you log in, make sure you do change that default password for security reasons. But here you're in the dashboard and it's showing you all the stats of your Homebridge server or your Raspberry Pi. So the way Homebridge connects to smart devices is that it uses plugins. So if I want to connect to WISE devices, I need the WISE plugin. For my Keylight, I need the Elgato plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and install those plugins right now. But here's where having a more recent Raspberry Pi will be more convenient and actually connected to an Ethernet jack. Ethernet port would be more convenient as well. Things will load up so much quicker. Uh, loading things on my Raspberry Pi Zero W, well, let's just say it took a little bit of time. So actually, sometimes I would have to do a number of attempts to get the plugins installed on my Raspberry Pi Zero W because it just has a very weak Wi-Fi radio and antenna on the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. Also, Homebridge does support certain smart video cameras as well. In that case, you're definitely going to need a later version of the Raspberry Pi. These little ones just don't have enough power or horsepower to run the video. So I'm going to go ahead and install these plugins by going to the plugins tab here. And I'm going to search for WISE. And as you can see, there's a number of plugins for WISE. And these are all plugins that are contributed by the community. I'm going to go ahead and install this first one here. And you're going to see that it's going to load up very quickly because I do have a later version of my Raspberry Pi and it's also connected to the Ethernet jack. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my credentials here and then also install the Elgato plugin. So I've installed both the WISE plugin and the Keylight plugin from, for my Elgato Keylight. And the next thing you want to do is go ahead and restart the service here by clicking on this button up here. And we're going to come back and see if we can see our accessories now. So now the Homebridge software has restarted. And I, when we go to the accessories, now we see our all our smart devices here. This is the Elgato Keylight. These four devices are the on our wise smart devices that are on my network. So if I turn on my camera here, you can see now I can control these devices via Homebridge, this dashboard here, right? So I can turn off my overhead light. Let's do that. Let's turn these back on. Now these are running on Homebridge, but not on HomeKit. So now I'm going to show you how we can bring this into HomeKit. And I'm going to show you this on my iPad right now. Okay, so we're now we're showing my iPad here. This is running the Home app. And if you remember on the Homebridge dashboard, there was a big QR code. And that's the QR code that we're going to scan. That'll bring in, that'll install a bridge into home, the Home app here on iOS. 
and that brings in the Homebridge install into HomeKit. So if we hit Add Accessories, that'll turn on the camera. And here you can see it's, the camera's pointing at my laptop, but we're going to point it at the QR code there. We're going to add Anyway Uncertified Accessory. We're going to skip this location one, but you can do, do the setup there just to save time. And now you can see that I have the compatible uh, accessories that I can control via the Home app. So if I turn on my camera again, I click on the Elgato key light that turns it on, off, and on. And I can turn off the overhead light as, and turn it on. So now I'm controlling these accessories via the Home app on my iPad. But now this is synced up with my iPhone and even the Home app on my Mac because it's uh, running off of iCloud right now. We're on my iPhone here and I wanted to show you things that carry over to the Home app because things are syncing via iCloud. We wanted to do some cool things using the Shortcuts app. Now I did a video on Shortcuts controlling Google Assistant things, and we can intermix some of those commands with our HomeKit commands as well. But here, I want, what I want to do now in the Shortcuts app is I want to create a command where I can control both the Elgato key light here and the overhead light all at the same time. So we're going to create a command called Demo Studio off. And obviously, this is going to turn off both the Elgato key light and the overhead light, which is a wise light, uh, all at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and add action. We're going to search for the home action here and say control my home. Going to add a scene in a directory. So we're going to go ahead and say, I want to control these two devices here next. And what we're going to do is we're going to tap it, tap them. And th the reason is because we want to turn off both of these lights at the same time. We're going to hit done. And we're going to X out of this. And now we have a demo studio off. Now, before we demo this, I'm going to create a demo studio on now. So demo studio on we're going to go ahead and add our home action here control my home we're going to select the devices we want to control next and now we want to keep it on like this so now you can see they're turning on at these levels here i'm going to hit done x out of here and now we're going to demo to see if this works so now I'm showing my camera here, and we're going to go ahead and demo this. these shortcuts running. I'm going to hit the Demo Short Studio off, and both lights turn off. I'm going to hit the Demo Studio on, and both lights turn on. Now, one thing I want to show you, a cool feature in iOS, is the Back Tap Accessibility feature. So if we go into Settings here, go into Accessibility, go to Touch, Go all the way down to the bottom. You're going to hit back tap here. Now we're going to program the double tap to turn on my studio lights here. We're going to go all the way to the bottom and you can see the shortcuts that I've created. So I'm going to hit this the double tap. I'm going to go studio on. Then we're going to do the triple tap. I'm going to do studio off. So now if we go to the home, I'm going to just triple tap here in the back. Now my studio lights turn off. I'm going to double tap and the studio lights turn off. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is just one way to bring in all my smart devices into Apple's HomeKit. Now I'm mainly on Amazon's platform. I have an Amazon Echo Show here. I have a one in the living room. I have an Amazon Echo Dot in the bedroom, but I always have my phone with me. And of course I showed you other things that you can do with the shortcuts app, the accessibility, back tap feature. So you can do a lot of things that you couldn't do before on Amazon or Google's platform. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.